When do people think about the world's most powerful computers today, they often think about IBM, Deep Blue, etc. But if you go back a little bit in history, the world's most powerful computers were always built by Cray Supercomputer, uh, an American company which still runs today and still builds supercomputers. In fact, they just had an announcement recently of a partnership with Microsoft Azure. One of the great things about Cray was that they always built not only amazing electronics, but also the physical designs of the machines were extremely interesting and just looked like they came from a science fiction film. And none more than the Cray YMP, uh, which was the world's fastest computer from 1988 to 1989. Um, and so I thought, what's the world's most interesting computer today? And it's probably the Raspberry Pi because it's absolutely everywhere. It's extremely affordable and people are doing a lot of cool things with it. So how would we mash up a Cray YMP with the Raspberry Pi? And I decided, what if we take the world's most powerful computer and we turn that into one of the world's most small supercomputers? And so. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own uh, Cray YMP Raspberry Pi Zero case. Uh, as you can see, we've got a Raspberry Pi Zero at the back. Um, and so if you want to build this yourself, you can either go and download the uh, STL files from thingiverse.com or you can buy a kit of the 3D printed files from our online store. When you get the kit, it comes in two sets of pieces, so there's a set of black pieces and a set of red pieces. Uh, or if you've printed it out yourself, then uh, this is what it ends up looking like. So inside the uh, red pieces, uh, what we get is there are eight of these which have got a kind of ridge on the back, which are used for the uh, processor towers. And then we have got eight of these L-shaped pieces, which are the seats for the cooling system. Um, then we have got uh, two of these kind of short pieces without anything on them which go to the top of the vector proc and then these two long ones with a kind of uh, chamfer on the front which go to the front of the vector proc and then of course you will get the uh, uh, nut and bolt which you will need to attach the Raspberry Pi to the actual cray and inside the black bag uh, we get three parts we get the two processors and then the vector proc tower, which actually itself is two parts. Uh, this is the body, and then this is the actual Raspberry Pi bracket. We'll be bolting the Raspberry Pi onto that. Um, if you want uh, to make the project a little bit cooler, you can add uh, an LED to the front so that you can tie that to the disk activity light, and so you'll have little blinking lights at the front of the cray while it's running. Some things you'll need to provide which are not included in the kit, of course, uh, the Raspberry Pi itself, uh, this is a Zero model, uh, you could use the Zero W, it should fit as well, uh, an SD card for actually putting the uh, Raspberry Pi image in, and then if you want to add the Disk Activity Light mod, uh, you will need an LED, uh, I use red but any color will work, a resistor 460 or 470 ohm, uh, and then some bits of cable and headers so that you can attach everything, and of course a soldering iron to put everything together. Okay, the first step of the build is to attach the Raspberry Pi to this uh, slide holder. Uh, it's very simple, I'm going to simply take the Raspberry Pi, slide it in uh, so that the connectors are visible through this back slot, and then I'm going to bolt through uh, these two points using the bolts which are provided in the kit. Uh, I've added here uh, a connection on GPIO pin 21 and ground, uh, that's so that we can do the little blinking light effect, that's an optional step, uh, you can leave that out if you want. To bolt this in place, what I'm going to do is there is a slot here uh, cut into the groove, which I'm going to slip my nut into. Uh, and then I'm going to pass the bolt through the hole on top and then into the nut below. And that will make sure that it stays uh, nice and solid bolted in. While you're tightening the bolt, if you find that the nut is slipping, you can reach in with a pair of tweezers and hold it in place while you tighten it. Okay, there we go. Doesn't have to be very tight. Uh, it holds in place quite well because the uh, ports are sandwiched by the frame. So now this guy is ready to slide into our main body. But before we do that, let's talk about putting the uh, LED into the front of the body. Okay, if you want to do the lighting mod for this case, there's a few things you're going to have to need to add to the kit. Uh, these don't come with it. Uh, we have a red LED here. Of course, you can use whatever color LED you want. A 470 ohm uh, resistor or 460 ohm, close enough. And then some cable, these are about two and a half inches long, that's about 60 millimeters. Uh, and then some 
uh, headers to make everything easier to assemble. And how we're going to build this is very simple. Uh, you're going to take your LED and you notice it's got two legs. It's got a long one and a short one, right? A long one here and a short one. We're going to solder the resistor to the longer leg and then this becomes the positive leg. So this will go to the GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi. And then we'll put the cable directly onto the short leg and that will become ground. Uh, and so when you're finished with it, uh, we're going to hot glue it into the front of the case so that it looks like this, right? And you can see that there is a notch printed into the back of the case and you can take a blob of hot glue, uh, put it in at the bottom and kind of stick your LED in so that it shines through the little holes on the case when it's finished. Uh, and you'll notice that I've put a little header here. Um, I'll put these pins on this one and I've put the uh, the female version on the Raspberry Pi. And the reason I do that is because it becomes much easier to assemble than uh, when you're trying to put the case together or if you want to take it apart. Uh, if these were soldered directly in place, you wouldn't have enough room to do the sliding action. Okay, let's start preparing the actual case. Uh, so we're going to take these two uh, processor posts and we need to glue all of the um, red parts to them. And so for each one, we're going to need four of these uh, kind of back parts, which go in here. And you'll see each one has a little tab and there's a slot. So we're going to slot them in place um, like this and we're going to glue them in place. And then we've got these four C parts, which look like an L shape. Again, they've got a little tab and there's a slot on the part. So we need to uh, slot them in place. So now we're just going to glue uh, four sets of each to this one and four sets of each to its partner over here. One thing to point out as I'm gluing these in, I'm using just regular super glue uh, for gluing these in place. Uh, it works really well with this PLA plastic. Uh, and also when I'm uh, gluing these red parts in, you'll notice that it has, uh, this part has two sides. It's got a completely flat side on the bottom here, and then it's got a kind of sharp side at the top. Uh, so you want to put it so that the flat side rests against this uh, abutment piece at the bottom, and then the uh, sharp piece at the top. So just using a little bit of super glue, you really don't need a lot. So I'm in the slot a couple of drops below. Then I just kind of put it in place, snap it in, and then just hold it for a minute or so. Now that we've got the back all done, it's time to do the uh, cooling units, the seats. So we're gonna do the same thing for each one. Uh, we're gonna take a little bit of glue, put it into the slot. And a couple of dots on top. We just clip it into place and hold it and wait for it to set a couple of minutes. So the way the decoration works on the main piece is we're going to take the short parts, uh, we're going to glue them on top over here right next to the center ridge, and then we're going to take the long part and we're going to glue it uh, to the front like this. And we'll do that for both sides. Now you need to pay, pay a little bit of attention here because these parts don't have a locating tab and also they have got special chamfers and things. So let's take a look at how those go so that you don't make a mistake while assembling. Now for the top part, the short ones, uh, you'll notice that they again have a completely flat back end and then the front has got a chamfer to it. This, this chamfer we want facing towards the front and up. So like this, right? So in other words, if you run your finger over here, you should feel the chamfer kind of going down. Now the other important thing when you're gluing this in place is that uh, this gap here, which is where the uh, pie will slot into, you need to make sure that the back part of the red piece doesn't overlap because otherwise there won't be enough space for the uh, slide to go in. So you should move it forward a little bit uh, to make sure that there's space or if you like uh, to be completely sure you can always slot this into place and then glue it uh, with that so that you don't make that mistake. So again I'm going to take just a little bit of super glue uh, on top like this. You don't need a lot and then carefully position the piece in place. And just hold it for a few minutes until it's done. And once that's set, we'll do the same for the other side. Now for the front decorations, we're going to use these longer pieces. And again, it's got a flat piece at the bottom, completely flat. And then at the top, it's got a piece with this kind of L-shaped chamfer to it. So this top piece is going to butt up against this here. And then uh, the bottom piece should be just short of the bottom, right? It doesn't go all the way down to the ground. So we're going to glue that in place there, and we're going to do the same for the other side. So same as before, put a little bit of glue in. Uh, be careful when you're applying the glue not to drop any into the little light holes at the front of the case. And we're going to push that there. We we'll push it up against this center uh, ridge, and then just hold it until it dries. And then we'll do the same for the other side. 
All the decorations are complete, the glue is set, so now it's time to uh, slot the Raspberry Pi in. So what we're going to do is first we're going to plug in uh, the LED, uh, and you'll notice that I've marked each of these headers with a little black mark over here. That indicates the ground cable, so that when I connect them up like this, I know that everything is going in the right orientation and we don't get a short circuit. So I'm going to kind of push in the plugs into the provided slot to make sure that they are out of the way. And then I'm just going to pop this in and start sliding it down on the rail. Uh, doing it slowly to make sure that everything ends up where it's supposed to. Get that out of the way in there. There we go. And that's it. Uh, it's complete. So now we can uh, finish this up. We'll just pop these into place. They've got uh, the vector box have got these little round kind of guides and there are little holes on the side here so you can just kind of push them in place. And here you've got a choice. You can either glue the sides into place which I'll be doing in a minute or we can leave them loose if you want to move the machine around etc. Uh, but essentially we're pretty much almost done. All we need to do is boot it up uh, and show it running. So if you want to add the LED disk activity light to the front of your case, uh, we need to make one small change to the Raspberry Pi disk. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick it into our regular Windows machine or your regular Mac machine, and you will see that there's a part of the disk we can read. Uh, once you open that up, look for a file called config.txt, and we're going to edit that. And right at the bottom of the file, we're going to add the string, dtparam equals act underscore LED underscore GPIO equals 21. 21 is the GPI open that we want to now do the disk activity uh, as opposed to the little built-in LED. Uh, and because we've soldered our LED to that, we should, when we start running the machine, see that blinking and so on while the uh, disk is running. And then at that, that point, the LED mod is complete. Okay, I've got my uh, Linux image on this card and I've made the change for uh, config.txt. So we can just uh, put it in and then plug in the USB and start it up. So I'm going to stick this in. There is a slot at the top of the case for you to be able to put the uh, SD card in and out. I'm going to put it in with the uh, the image facing towards the, the round part of this. So I'm going to stick that in. And that's it. All right, let's power it up. And there we go. You can see the disk activity lights blinking at the front. And our Raspberry Pi. Cray YMP Raspberry case is complete. Doesn't it look ominous?